In this video, we're going to learn a technique of integration called integration by part. So the basic idea is you start with the product rule, and this is just kind of a shorthand here uh, for the product rule. The derivative of the product is the derivative of the times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Solve this for uv prime, and then integrate each one of these terms. Now, from the fundamental theorem of calculus, we know that the integral will undo the derivative in the uv term here. And so then if I change the v prime to dv and the u prime to du, I get our fundamental equation for integration by part. So the idea is if you have something you can recognize as a product of two functions, one I would consider a u function and the other one is a dv function. So one function I'm going to take the derivative and with the other function I'm going to take the antiderivative. And the idea is that after I do that, I get two functions, v and du, and hopefully it's easier or possible to find the antiderivative of v du when it's difficult or impossible to find the antiderivative of u dv directly. So this is useful if you can think of the integrand as a product and this technique is in my top three most important things for you to learn in your calculus sequence. There are many, many applications in engineering and higher mathematics which are based on this very simple idea. So while you may not be asked to actually do some of the examples that we're going to do, understanding that there is this technique uh, is extremely useful in building new algorithms or understanding solutions to uh, partial differential equations. So let's start with probably the most basic example. We're going to try to find the antiderivative of x e to the x dx. So there's nothing that we've learned so far that could help us uh, find the antiderivative. So what we do is we want to use our integration by parts. We want to think of this as the product of two functions. One is a u function. And so I'm going to take the derivative of that function to get du being, in this case, dx. And then I think of the other function as being dv equaling e to the x dx. And so now I'm going to take the antiderivative of this function. And the antiderivative of e to the x dx is just e to the x. And so now I can write this integral as the product uv, so that's x e to the x, minus the integral of v, I'm sorry, of, yes, v du. And v du is just e to the x dx. So now you can see that uh, we had x to, to the e to the x in the original integral. Now in our integration by parts formula, we just have the integral of e to the x dx. And that's a simple integral. And so the antiderivative then is x e to the x minus e to the x plus c. And uh, just make a little reminder to yourself somewhere about this plus c. We're still going to get the constant of integration when we have an indefinite integral. And when we get into these different integration techniques, sometimes it falls into the cracks. And so make yourself some kind of reminder to always check for the plus C. You don't have to put it in every step, but make sure at the very end you have a plus C. 
Let's look at a definite integral. Here I have x times cosine of x as my integrand. I'm integrating from 0 to pi over 2. So again, I want to remember my formula. I'll have the integral of u dv is uv minus the integral of v du. So for my u choice, I'm going to have x again. And by the way, you know, in most of our examples, it's going to be true that the first function is u and the second function is dv, but it doesn't have to be that way. Uh, the order that they're written in the integrand doesn't determine it. But, and it is a little bit uh, difficult at times to decide what should be u and what should be dv, but whatever you choose for dv, it has to be something that you can easily find an antiderivative for. All right, so um, du then would be just dx again. dv is then cosine of x dx. The antiderivative of cosine is just sine. So putting it into our formula, then I would have uv, so x sine of x. Now with definite integrals, I like to put an evaluation sign. You don't have to perform the evaluation right away, but I want to put it in there so I don't forget that that is part of the evaluation. And then subtract off uh, v du, and the integral has the same bounds from 0 to pi over 2. And so now I can go ahead and find the antiderivative of sine, that's negative cosine. So I'll have x sine x from my uv, and then plus cosine of x, and I'll just do that evaluation in a single step between 0 and pi over 2. And after I finish that, I get pi over 2 minus 1. So again, the best choice for u and dv is not always obvious, but there are some good guidelines. So for example, if you have a polynomial times either a trig function or an exponential function, then the polynomial is a good choice for u, and the trig or exponential function is usually a good choice for dv. But it's not a hard and fast rule. It's just a, it's just a, a guideline. In our next example, I have a polynomial times a hyperbolic trig function. And so uh, following our guidelines, it would make sense to say that I'd like to have u equal 2x cubed minus 3x. So du would be 6x squared minus 3 dx. And then I, it's easy to find the antiderivative of cosh of x. Antiderivative of cosh is just cinch of x. And so now I'll have my u times v minus the integral of v du. So uh, I still don't know the antiderivative of this integral. So what I can do, though, I can see that it's still a polynomial times a hyperbolic trig function. So let me try using integration by parts a second time with this integral. Again, I'll choose u to be the polynomial. So now du is 12x. Uh, dv is cinch of x dx. And so the antiderivative of cinch is just cosh. And so we're not exactly going in a circle here because every time we're reducing the power of the polynomial, I started with something to the power of 3, then I have to the power of 2. Now I have something to the power of 1. And so now let me go ahead and put uv minus integral v du. And I'll distribute the minus sign. And so I'm not quite at something that I know the antiderivative of yet, but I feel like I'm making progress. So I'm going to go ahead and use integration by parts one more time. Now my new u is going to be 12x, and the du is 12dx. dv is going to be the cosh of x dx. So v is just going to be cinch of x. And so now 
putting the formula in one last time, I have my uh, uv would be 12x sin x, and I still need to subtract off integral v du. And now this, I know the antiderivative of, I know the antiderivative of 12 sin of x is just going to be 12 cosh of x, plus my constant of integration. And so there it is. Sometimes you just have to use, oh, and it is nice when you get these long answers. There's a way that you can combine them in any way. So I think here it looks nice if we uh, put all of the polynomials that are multiplied by sinh x, collect those like terms, and the polynomials that are multiplied by cosh x, collect those together. But sometimes you're just going to have to use integration by parts or potentially a different technique multiple times. Let's look at another case, but with a slightly different uh, result at the end. So here I have sinh of x times sine of x, and here's a case where it might not be clear which one should be u and which one should be dv. Uh, but I don't think you can go wrong with either choice here. So um, I'm going to stick with the first one as being u. The derivative of sinh is just cosh. And then if I say uh, dv is sine x dx, the antiderivative of sine x is negative cosine x. So let me put in my u times v. So that would be a negative cosine of x sinh of x. And since I have a minus in front of the cosine, I'm going to get a plus. Now, integral cosh of x, cosine of x. And so uh, I don't know the antiderivative of this, but maybe if I use uh, integration by parts again, it will help me. So I'll select u to be cosh of x. So du will be sinh of x dx. And then dv is going to be cosine of x dx. The antiderivative of cosine of x is just sine of x. So let's go ahead and use our integration by parts formula with this integral. So I'll have minus cosine of x sinh of x. That was the original u times v. Now my new u times v is cosh of x times I have a problem here. My new u times v should be uh, cosh of x times sine of x. All right. Mistakes will happen. So let's make the correction. And I'll have to make it on the subsequent slides. So that would be cosh of x sine of x. That's my uv. Subtract off the integral of v du. So that would be du is sinh of x dx, and v is sine of x. So give me a chance here to make my correction. Now look, I put this in the same color as the original. In fact, I actually cut and paste the original because yes, it is identical to the original integral that I'm trying to find the derivative of. So these are really like terms. And if I'm trying to solve for this, what I could do is go ahead and add that integral to each side. And that's going to give me 2 times that integral equals, put the correct terms in here, these other two functions.
So now if I wanted to know the value of this integral, I just need to divide both sides by two or multiply both sides by one half. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So that's just going to equal one half then of the right hand side. And of course, I can't forget my constant of integration. Let me skip past those two, but now let's look at this example here. I have natural log of x dx. I'd like to find the integral or the antiderivative of natural log of x dx. And you might say to yourself, well, wait a minute, I thought we we're supposed to have a product of two functions. Well, I could start off with u equaling natural log of dx, and you're like, okay. And d would be one over x dx. Fine, but what about dv? Well, we can always think of dv as being equal to dx, or you could think of that as being my second function as being the constant function one dv is 1 dx. And of course, the antiderivative of dx would just give me x. And so now I can put those into my formula. So u times v would just be x natural log of x, and then subtract off the integral of v du. Well, v is x, du is 1 over x dx. And I can see that, oh, I can simplify this. The x is going to divide out. I'll be left with just 1 dx. And the antiderivative of 1 dx is just going to be x. And I can't forget my constant of integration. So the antiderivative of natural log of x dx is natural log of x minus x plus c. So sometimes the best option, or sometimes the only option is to choose dv equals dx. And you're really just saying that dv equals one times dx. So I'm gonna stop here and I'm going to create a separate video with more examples.